Good morning. That sounded like two or three people. Good morning. That sounds better. I'm Clary Summersall. I'm one of the senior administrators here at Montgomery College, and I'd like to welcome you to another presentation because of the partnership that we have with Accenture. You're really in for a special session. On behalf of the Board of Trustees and the President of Montgomery College, Dr. Darian Pollard, I take great pleasure in welcoming our Accenture partners and the students of the Rockville campus to our presentation in the Skills to Succeed joint venture with Accenture. We are in for a stimulating conversation dealing with ethics and core values, <coughs> huge topics for our interconnected business world. Business practices in one part of the world have a profound impact on all other parts of the world. How many of you are from another country? Let's see your hands. Look at this. Have you observed how ethics and core values have influenced business in your homeland? Have you observed that? You need to take lessons from what is happening all around you. We're going to be listening to Mr. Karp from Accenture. He is one of the lawyers within Accenture, and he has primary responsibility for compliance. And so we're talking about someone who is knowledgeable about ethics and core values and how they play out in the workplace. Our partnership with Accenture provides a wonderful opportunity for you, our students, to explore what is happening around you. You're going to be examining options for a future where you will be competing with people from Boyd's right up the street and Bangladesh. You will also be asking yourself questions about your core values as you navigate higher education and the workplace. We live in a global economy, and being globally aware and globally competitive are essential skills. We are enriching the life of Montgomery County and the college community by continuing our partnership with Accenture. I'd like to thank the people in the room who are responsible for maintaining that partnership. Letitia Roberson from Accenture has been working with us since the summer of 2011. Your own professor, Professor Lynette, has been working with us. And this is the second session that we've had at the Rockville campus where Professor Lynette has brought in his students. We have Dr. Patty Bartlett, who is the dean who is responsible for the business area at the Rockville campus, and Stacy Miller. Stacy is my lieutenant. She is the person who makes sure that the logistics are taken care of. We would not be as successful as we are with our partnership without the able assistance of our MCTV. For, indeed, we are being videotaped so that your classmates who could not participate today will have an opportunity to go on YouTube in short order and be able to see this lecture presentation. With that, I'd like to introduce Professor Lynette, who will introduce our keynote speaker for today, Mr. Karp. Professor Lynette. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Summersaw. Uh, it's really a pleasure to have Mr. Karp here today. The, the whole subject of ethics and core values and compliance permeates every nook and cranny of the organizations that matter these days, and it's really front row center in 2013, so it's a real pleasure to have Mr. Karp. Jason R. Karp is Director of Global Ethics Programs at Accenture, which he joined in 2007. He's been practicing law since 1992 in a variety of private practice, government, and corporate environments. In his present position, Mr. Karp is responsible for overseeing all of Accenture's global ethics programs, which includes managing its code of business ethics, uh, ethics awareness and communication campaigns, required ethics and compliance training, conflicts of interest oversight and analysis, among others. Prior to Accenture, 
Jason started an outsourced general counsel practice for Kelly, Dry, and Warren, where, in addition to providing counsel on a variety of corporate and compliance issues, served as general counsel for companies such as Global Telecom and Technology, Wiser Communi Telecommunications, and eCentives. He also started the legal department of Net 2000 Communications, oversaw the Strategic Initiatives Group of MCI Metro, and was president of a Children's National Fitness Center franchise. Jason Karp is a member of the D.C., Virginia, and Maryland Bars, the Association of Corporate Counsel, and Ethics and Compliance Officers Association. He enjoys running. You can see he's got very low body fat over here. And participates in running and adventure racing and plays keyboards with a local, original, contemporary pop band. He currently lives with his family in Northern Virginia. It's my extreme pleasure to introduce Jason R. Karp. Thank you. Um, can, I, can everyone hear me just with this? The, uh, is this mic working? Yes, in the back? Yes, yes everybody? Yes. No? Yes. You can hear, but you, you all can't. All right, well, I'll do my best. I'll say, can you hear with this? No. OK. Just for that audio. I don't need this. OK. And is this supposed to be amplifying me, or do I just need to talk loud? <laughs> I got it. OK. Well, it's good. I'm from New York, so I can talk loud. Uh, thank you all. I, uh, I very much appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Uh, it's a terrific partnership we have uh, with the college. Uh, hopefully, can provide some insights to you about um, some of these key issues that we deal with regularly in the corporate environment. Um, I'm a pretty casual guy. Um, I like this to be interactive. Even if you don't want it to be interactive, I'm probably going to make it interactive for you. Uh, I want to have a little bit of fun because, uh, you know, while I think this topic is scintillating, um, uh, you know, the, the concept of ethics, core values, yeah, 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 okay, good. Uh, but there's actually some, uh, I, I think, really interesting uh, issues that we'll talk about today. We're going to do some fun exercises, uh, really get everybody involved. and. Uh, Hopefully you'll, you'll walk away a little bit, uh, a little bit wiser uh, about uh, some of the things to look forward to in your careers. So um, accounting and business 101, right? That's what we've got mostly in makeup here. So is that, are you all essentially then new to the college? Are these first, second year type students? Is that essentially right? Yes? OK. So who has ever, um, who's had a part-time job? Show of hands. OK, I think that's a lot. There's some low hands there. Who has had or currently has a full-time job? OK, much, much lower. And if any of those, has, has anybody worked in what I would call corporate America? So not a retail, not a restaurant, but in an office, office park with a business. Anybody? Show of hands. Yes, we've got a couple. OK, good. Let me tell you a little bit about Accenture. I, I don't know if, if to what extent you've, you've been at these lectures before, and we've had other folks. I like to see that there was a big global mix of people in the audience because as you all venture out in your careers, no matter what the career ultimately ends up being, and no matter where ultimately you're employed, you're most likely going to be interacting on a global basis. Our world has changed dramatically. When I started 20 some odd years ago, it, we were not nearly as connected. I still, uh, uh, you know, wonder at, at the communication that my kids have mastered. Um, they've got three or four devices going at one time. They're constantly in touch. And, you know, and I, I remember when I was a kid, it was a matter of screaming out the window to see if your friends were around. Um, and so things have really changed. Accenture uh, is a company of over 260,000 people. Um, that's bigger than many countries, certainly bigger than many cities. Uh, we are located in over 50 countries, and we do business in over 100 countries worldwide. Um, so while the U.S. operations are quite large, uh, the bulk of our operations, the bulk of our personnel are actually non-U.S. based. So we're constantly interacting with, uh, with other cultures. And as, as we'll get into a bit in some of this discussion, it makes a big difference when you're talking about ethics, when you're talking about co um, core values, ultimately it comes down to core culture. Um, and there's some real distinct differences between the way we behave here in the United States 
and what are acceptable practices uh, throughout the world. So with that, um, so I asked about the jobs. Okay, who here has ethics? Probably not. I like that. It's a good answer. No. Who's got it? Come on. Hands. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. Who's got ethics? There's not a lot of people. All right. So let's ask this. How about this? What are ethics? Let's start with that. What are ethics? And I will call on people if you do not volunteer. I come from the Socratic method of teaching. Grew up that way in uh, law school, and I am not shy. So, and don't think you're safe in the back. So, what are ethics? Yes? That's excellent. That's an excellent answer. Set of beliefs under your own point of view, from your own experiences that you think are correct. Anybody? What else? How about some examples? Any examples of you know, ethical behaviors? Come on, come on. Who's ever gone on a date? Anybody ever gone on a date before? Anyone in this room? Anybody? Yes. Yes. Bueller? Bueller? No? Does anybody know that reference? No. Um, <laughs> has anyone over, ever opened the door for you to walk into a building? No. Yes. yes. No. Yes. <laughs> So is that ethical behavior? Maybe? No? Yes? Yes? No? Set of values. Is that a value? Is it a value to say, I'm going to open this door for this person. I'm going to let them go first. It's, to me, that's important that, that I be polite and let them walk into the, into the building first. Is that a value? Yeah? No? There's no right answers. All right answers, either way you want to look at it. So ethics are a lot of different things. In fact, you can even cheat by looking at the screen a little bit and say, you know, what, what are ethics? Choices, benefits, morals. Anybody in here have morals? I know this, this is the long shot. You think you're raising your hand a lot. I mean, no one else is, so. It's good. I like it. I like it. You in the red, the soccer jersey. I'm not sure you have morals. I'm sorry? I'm not sure if you have morals or not. I got some morals. You do have some morals. It's good. All right, excellent. All right, so what are ethics? What we said. Okay. Shared values. So this gentleman in the front said, by, according to my point of view, things that I think are right. And that's true, but... When we think about ethics from a global perspective, I might think something is perfectly fine that he might disagree with, right? I may say, uh, you know, when someone's down, give them a kick and move on. Let's go. It's a corporate world. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna advance ourselves. He may disagree with that. That may be a value to me, that it's more important to, to, to prosper in business than it is to help your fellow coworker. Right? So it's not necessarily, the point I want to make, it's not necessarily individual when we talk about ethics from a corporate perspective or global perspective, but it's our shared values. So now what are, kind of, what are our shared values as a society? Be kind. To the next person. Be con Boom! That's a great one. Be kind to the, per you know, the person next to you, the person that you come across. Be kind. Is that good? Were you taught that as kids? Yeah. Still, kids are still taught that, right? Yeah, yeah, be kind. What else? Be honest. Most people are taught to be honest. Not everyone is, but most people are taught that that's a value that we should, you know, we should value as, as a society, right? What else? Yes? Be fair. Be fair. Oh, I like that one. Be fair. And as you all will go through your careers, you're going to come across people who are extremely fair. You're going to come across people who aren't. Others, others you can think of? Respect property. Respect property. Excellent. So we're going to respect people. We're going to be fair. We're going to be honest. We're going to be kind. We're going to respect their property. Anyone disagree with any of these yet? Is that pretty much, you know, pretty much a no-brainer that these are acceptable standards for us in, in, a, in a civilized society? Yeah? Nods? 
We'll get you wake. We're going to wake you up. So the best way to handle an ethical dilemma is to prevent its occurrence in the first place. And I love this. Because an ethical dilemma in and of itself may not, may not necessarily be illegal, right? It may just be uh, uh, you're not sure how to handle a given situation. Um, it, it may be problematic, but you know, not necessarily you know, something that the law enforcement is going to be concerned about. Um, so obviously, you want to avoid legal entanglements before they happen, but just ethical dilemmas. How do you prepare yourself to deal with ethics when you're out working in the corporate world? Now, I work with 260,000 different people. Can you imagine we have some differences of opinions and differences of culture? Can you imagine that if we got a, a controversial topic in this, just in this room, the kinds of differences of opinions we could expect, right? So what are some of the ways that we think we can deal with these ethical differences, these cultural differences, to stop them before they start when you're dealing with thousands of people across different continents, different countries, all trying to accomplish arguably the same objective, and that is a successful business operation. Ideas? Thoughts? Let me get rid of this. Yes. Communication. We're going to get to that in a minute. Yes. Others? Others? Anybody? Just throw out some ideas? Yes. Um, I have some businesses have like a code of ethics in their business plan. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. You saw my presentation already. <laughs> code of business ethics. We're going to get to that. Anything else? Anything else to think about? All right. Think about Chew on that for a little bit. State of ethics and compliance. Why is this so important? As your esteemed professor you know, noted, you know, these, these are issues that uh, are just so prevalent in the world today. So this is from a survey that was done this past year by the Corporate Executive Board, it's a large organization, and the Compliance and Ethics Leadership Council. Okay? Compliance and Ethics programs face an increasing complex business environment. Okay? We talked about that, right? The last few years were marked by continued uncertainty about the global economy. Do you think that the downturn in the global economy affects the decisions that people make? Do you think they're, in some cases, willing to take more risk or less risk when it comes to business success? What do you think? Huh? More risk. More risk. Very often that is the case. But not always, the, the risk isn't always in the, in the right place, right? Um, record penalties for noncompliance and the introduction and enforcement of costly rules and regulations. I don't know if you're familiar with any of these. The Conflict Minerals Provisions of the Dodd-Frank Act, Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. There's the uh, FCPA, Federal uh, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, uh, that deals with anti-corruption overseas. All this new regulation coming out of you know, the blow up on Wall Street, Morgan Stanley, um, you know, anyone and everyone, right? You, you, you've all heard. Uh, of this, if you didn't, you know, live through it in a way that you felt it, I'm sure your families did. A lot of controversy over the last five, six years about the behaviors of corporate America. So there's been a lot of regulation. Congress is getting involved; they're passing all these rules, you know, to, to try to keep people to act, quite frankly, ethically. And ultimately, that's what it's about: disclosure, ethics, appropriate corporate behavior. Okay. I've got this highlight, the increasing role of regulation in business operations. You are going to face this as accounting and business 101 measures. When you get out into, your, into the real world, you are going to be faced with regulations. Accounting is one of the high, more highly regulated specialties that we've got. Uh, generally, accounted, accept, generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP, which uh, some of you hopefully are aware of or, or will become aware of. Um, there's various oversight boards, the SEC are all involved in uh, ensuring that accounting practices are above board, are ethical, et cetera. Um, consumers, boards, governments, companies act with integrity. Okay, Again, highlighted. Huge emphasis of, of our regulatory system these days. Uh, and, and, and huge pressure from consumers. You know, who's fed up? Who's fed up with the news stories? Who's fed up being mistreated? You know. Uh, for those people who lived through some of this, they lost their fortunes, they lost their mortgages, they lost their homes, right? 
consumers are putting a lot of pressure on the business world, on, on regulators, on our government to ensure that corporations are acting ethically. Okay? It's accelerated the importance of compliance and ethics to business success. Our CEO, Pierre Nanterm, does not go out and speak to any group of investors, clients, without sharing our, our strategy um, for long-term growth and success. And can anyone guess what one key pillar of that strategy is? Come on. You know you want to say it. Who's going to say it? Oh, busted. Um, what is a, cre a key pillar of business success for Accenture? Obviously, we need to you know, want to make revenue growth, profits. We want to move into new areas. But given what the topic is today, one of the key elements that, that, that our CEO and various other executives in our company constantly mention when they go out to see investors and others is? <laughs> Ding, 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 ding. All right, so it's, it's ethics, it's corporate culture, it's compliance. We call it compliance as a strategy. I'm going to show you a little bit more about that, that later. Compliance and ethics is now involved in every aspect of company operations. It is not just kind of pie in the sky, it's not nice words on a page. It's built into everything we do. We call it compliance by design. So we have compliance as a strategy, that's where we're going. Compliance by design. We build all our programs and processes to ensure that they're compliant from the get-go. And it can get very, very complicated when you're dealing with large, complex corporations. Okay? Another statistic, this is from the same survey. Most important program girls the board and senior management in this survey. Okay, very simply, promoting a corporate culture of integrity. 39%. So of all the things in, in, in the, the, that they're most concerned about in this space, it's promoting a culture of integrity. Could you imagine that's the number one thing that's on corporate CEOs and corporate boards' minds these days? Yeah, profits, obviously. But in order to get there, this is key. This is huge because it can kill a company. Kill a company. You don't even have to be convicted of anything, right? You can get killed in, in the court of public opinion, as you all have heard, right? Doesn't take much. This new story breaks. Everybody's got preconceived notions about that company. Okay, huge. Spreads like wildfire. So, this is this is a key issue for for corporate boards and and for the the CEO and and chief executive uh, uh, community. So we've talked about ethics. Ethics are what our shared values. values. Excellent. We got some people listening. It's good. So our shared values. So, can I walk around? Excellent. All right, so our shared values. Someone mentioned code of business ethics, but we've got these shared values. How does that translate into now behaviors within a company? Right? I mean, someone over here said be kind to others. Well, we all know to be kind to others, but how is that kind of, I think someone mentioned communication earlier, and that's really where I want to go. How do we get from, okay, I believe it's good to be kind to this gentleman right here. Hi, how are you? You enjoying yourself? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, but how do I make sure that you all feel the same way? And maybe I'm not in this room. I'm in some other room, and I'm being nice to him, and, and you all are throughout, throughout the world. And I want you to be kind to this person. How, how, how are we going to do that? In a large corporation, you're doing accounting, you're doing operations, you're doing IT development, you're a lawyer, you're the CEO, you're running around the world. How do you get consistent behavior across a company like that? Let's see. Green. Communication. communication. All right, I like it. It's a good start. Communication. What do you communicate, though? What's that? Let their presence be known. Let their presence be known. Be kind to somebody, say hi to them. Okay, so in, in that particular instance, communicate by demonstrating it through your own behaviors. Right? Modeling the behaviors. That's one way to do it. How else? Because I can't model that behavior for all 260,000 of my fellow employees. What do you think? In addition to the code of ethics, there would be community training or education. I love it. Training and education. 
Again, what are we going to train and educate on? From a global perspective. Not ethics generally, right? I mean, we all know to be kind to each other. But I mean, if, if I sit down and make a list of everything ethical that I want in terms of behaviors, I'm going to be here all day. And how am I going to communicate that to everyone? They're already working 10, 11, 12, 14 hours a day doing their jobs. We can't sit there and make a list, all right, we want you to be kind, we want you to do this, we want you to do that. I'm going to put you out of your misery. Okay? How are shared values reflected in a corporate environment? Okay? Through something we call core values. Other companies might call them something different. Core values, core behaviors, core principles. Okay? Core values. Core values are the items that drive your corporate culture. Now, can a corporation have a culture? Yes? Absolutely it can. And you'll see this as you go out. I've worked, I've had the pleasure of working for many, many different corporations, law firms. I've been with the federal government. Every one of them has had a different behavioral feel. Some are cutthroat, get the work done, da, 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 da. You're, you're isolated, you're on your own. Others are very collaborative, they want to work together. There are things that are very important to, to, to certain, certain companies like corporate citizenship, getting out into the community, helping others, sustainability, environmental practices. Right? All of these things differ from company to company, it helps establish a corporate culture. And that is driven by, one, our ethics, two, how those ethics are translated into core values. And we're going to go over that right now. And that helps drive your, drives your corporate culture. Bam! Look at that. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. OK? That's the extent of my technical abilities. That's why I'm a lawyer. Let all the good stuff go to, go to you all. So what are core values? Okay. The values that are most important to the direction of the organization and the decision making within it. Okay, so let's say I run an auto dealership. Okay. The values that are most important in the direction of the organization. Now do you think an auto dealership is going to have the same values as a ice cream shop. But, but they're going to are they going to share ethics? Yes. So you can see how now we, we're getting into a differentiation depending on the industry, the business you're in, and has a real effect on corporate culture, which we saw from the, the, the slides on the survey, that culture, corporate culture has a tremendous impact on business success. So how these things are all interrelated, okay? The essence of the corporate culture and expression of its personality. And every corporation does have a personality, okay? What are the key components of core values, okay? And there's no absolute answer here, okay? These are going to be driven by the people who are running the corporation. They're going to be driven by your ethics, by your shared community. But here are some things to think about. They provide a foundation for your corporate culture, okay? Without them, your corporate culture is just going to fall down like a building without, it, without a foundation. These are key, key elements to how you're going to behave when you all are in the business world. In defining your core values, you are in essence defining the building blocks of your corporate culture, okay? They provide, and this is key, a common understanding of acceptable behaviors. Now we talked about acceptable behaviors, right? We're going to be kind. We're not going to kick our, our, our fellow people when they're down, right? We're not going to slam that door in their face. We're going to be truthful, right? Yep. You are a truthful guy, I could tell. You're looking at me with a truthful face. I like that, okay? They guide sound decision making, okay? So I've got core values, I've got ethics, but I come across a dilemma. I'm in a high-risk jurisdiction, a high-risk country overseas. I'm doing business. I'm rocking and rolling. I'm making my sales figures for the quarter. I am a superstar. 
but I'm running into some, some difficulty in closing this deal. I need to get uh, you know, into this deal uh, with the local government and they're not, I, I'm not, I can't get into the RFP. Does everyone know what an RFP is? Request for proposal process. That's where governments send out requests to companies and say, come bid on services that I want to buy. Okay? I can't get in on that. Something, they're locking me out, you know? So I'm going to, you know, and, 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 and what I know about this country is that they use these, these, these folks called business facilitators. Oh, that sounds good. Let me, let me look into this. What's a business facilitator? Well, this is somebody local to the, to the country, knows the country, you know, maybe friends or knows people in high places in the government. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm going to talk to this business facilitator and I'm going to say, I need to make my numbers. I got to buy my, you know, kid, the, 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 the G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Again, it's long before you all were around. Um, you know, I got to get my, 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 my son the new super duper, you know, iPad. I, I need to, you know, do this, do that. I got to make my numbers. I got to be the superstar that I am. I'm going to sit down and this person and say, hey, how do I get into this RFP? No problem. All you got to do is pay a simple $10,000 facilitation fee. This is normal. This is normal accepted practice in, the, in, 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 in this jurisdiction, in this geography. Everybody does it. Okay? Say, hmm. Everybody does it. It's a facilitation fee for a business facilitator. So I can bid on work for my company. My company's going to benefit from this. You know, great. Boom. OK. Um, sound decision making. Is that sound decision making? What do you think? Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? See some smiles. Yes? Sounds reasonable? Have I said anything that is like, oh my god, no, you shouldn't do that? We, we're talking theft? Are we talking lying? Right? So far consistent with our ethics, right? How do I know, as that person out in the field, whether I should pay that facilitation fee, whether I should do that? Well, how I'm going to know is because I'm going to have a set of core values, possibly a code of business ethics, that's going to help me answer that question. It's going to give me guidance because it's going to show me what our shared values are as a company and whether that behavior is OK. And what I, what I described, it may, be, it may actually be OK in certain circumstances. In others, it may not. OK? But, but this is key. OK? It's not our individual ethics. You know, it's about what, what the kind of shared feeling is among folks, and it's going to help us to make sound decisions. And ultimately, this is the key. If you make sound decisions, you're going to drive business success. Let's say that that was an improper payment. That would have been looked at as a bribe, OK? And I went ahead and did it. We won the business. A year later, the Department of Justice comes in, knocks on the door, and says, we think you made a bribe. Do you think that business is going to be worth it at that point? No. So, OK, exercise time. We've got to define our core values. Steps to define our core values, OK? We want to identify our values. These are, these are our ethics, our shared values, right? We want to identify them. We want to come to agreement. So we run a corporation. We want to come to agreement on what's important to us as a corporation. I mentioned the example of the auto industry. OK? What's important for our success? We want to group them into logical categories. Right? So for example, um, you know, one of the things about uh, an auto industry might be we want to service our customers with the highest degree of, of, of care and satisfaction. Right? So we have a customer care one. We may want to be that our accounting practices and our financing is going to, our, is going to be uh, um, you know, sound and, and uh, uh, always truthful. Right? So there's different categories of values you can put together. And then you want to test them. You want to test them and say, all right, does this work? Let me think of a real life situation and put it together, test it against my core value. Does it work? Does it make sense? Will it apply in all circumstances? 
Is it universally correct? At the end of the day, then you want to codify it, you want to write them down, and then you want to communicate them. Okay? So we're going to do that right now. Um, this is just an example of Accenture's core values. We have six of them. Okay? We have something called client value creation. Okay? And, that deal, and that's how we group all of our core values around servicing our clients. One global network. We're, we're 260,000 people. We, we work in 100 different countries. So we have core values about how we do that, how we integrate our services, how we work together with different cultures. Respect for the individual. This isn't huge. Right? How we treat each other. This is the be kind. Okay? Best people. You know, it, it's a huge priority for us to hire the best people. And some of you may be those best people when you get out of here and you apply to different jobs. Right? Integrity. This is the truthfulness. Always be truthful, right? And finally, we call this stewardship. This is, the le this is your legacy. What do you want to leave behind? How are you going to coach the person coming up through the ranks? How are we going to you know, ensure that these core values continue to live on after we're gone? OK? All right, so we've got a little bit more time, so I'm going to just take you through a little bit more. So here's an example of a company we all know and hopefully love. Um, and I have an intimate relationship with Google. Is there, they are a, uh, a client of Accenture's, and I've, I've worked with them for, for several years. This is their core values. Okay, I give you a sense. And core values, and, and, and why I wanted you to see this, and I had a whole bunch of examples, but what I like about this is you're not in a box when you're dealing with culture, when you're dealing with core values. You can be as innovative as you can be when you're, when you're designing a circuit board or designing a program. And you should be, because every culture is different. Every culture is made up of the people in that organization. And you're not the same as, as she, and you two aren't the same, and we're not the same, right? So how do you bring that all together? So focus on the user. That's their, that's their customer care, right? We're all users of Google, I expect. Um, they have a philosophy about, we're not going to diversify into 100 different areas. We're going to do one thing. We're going to do it. We're going to be the best. We're going to be the best search engine that anyone has ever seen. Are they? Pretty much. Right? Uh, fast is better than slow. Who's been watching the NCAAs? You ever see the commercials for, uh, I think it's AT&T, right? Have you seen the AT&T commercials with the guy sitting there with the kids? In basketball, is it better to be fast or slow? better be fast and I'm gonna be you know super quickie man or whatever the little kid is anyway if you haven't seen it then you won't get that <laughs> fast is better than slow okay they work in a very fast-paced environment uh, most of you can expect that when you go out into the workforce you're gonna be working in a fast-paced environment I think the days of slower paced environments are, are dwindling away and I've worked in some of those early in my career and life is very different now you know with all the communication methodologies we've got modalities that we use I mean, right now, I do, I do not have a phone at work. My phone is my computer. I instant message through it. I do video conferencing through it. I can receive my phone calls through it. I do my email through it. I do my presentations through it. It's the only thing I need. It's all integrated. It's where, you know, wherever I am. And then when it's not my computer, we all know what it is. Okay? I can do almost everything I can do on my computer on this little device, including video conferencing. It's crazy. It's a tremendously fast-paced environment. And when you work globally, okay, the world's never off. Mm -hmm. Because somebody's always awake. Somebody's always working. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Right? It's 2 o'clock somewhere. And so how do you manage that when you're in a global corporation you know, and you're getting calls at 2 in the morning? You know, on the other side of the world, they're up and rocking and rolling. And they need guidance. They need advice. They need to be able to, to operate. And they need your help. What are you going to do? So you got to manage that, right? So fast is better than slow. Uh, is there democracy on the web works? And I think we all like that. Um, and, and, and they're not going to force a solution, right? They believe in in input and designing to people's needs and desires. Uh, I love this one. You don't need to be at your desk to need an answer. The world is changing, and many of you, when you get out into the workforce, are not going to have a traditional desk or a traditional office or a traditional cubicle. Some of you will. I, 
my office is my living room couch. I work at home probably 90 to 95% of the time. I have an office in Arlington. We go in when we have meetings. We, you know, there's things that we need to do. But the reality is um, we live in a virtual workplace, you know, and it's only going to become more and more so, especially in a global environment. Um, you can make money without doing evil. Okay. This is kind of their, I believe, may have been their first one. And that's the one they live by internally. You can make money by without doing evil. What does that mean? Having just gone through that exercise, what do you think that means? Red. I mean, I guess it's kind of like the opposite of the, the people who run banks and <laughs> I love it. I love it. You don't have to be a bad actor. Any of you read about what's going on with Google in China? Have you heard about some of this stuff that's gone on over the last year and, and, and you know, uh, uh, concern about data privacy issues? And, you know, and, and I think they recently announced, you know, they're not, they're not having it. They're not going to do what, what, the, what the government is asking them to do because it's, it's not the right thing to do. I love that. If there's anything you take away, that's not even an Accenture one. That, that, that is, is, it, it embodies so much of everything we've talked about. Integrity, truthfulness, respecting the individual, respecting your fellow coworker, right? All just in this simple statement. I love it. And you can make money. In fact, in fact, I would switch it to say, without doing evil, you will make money. You will make more money. Because it's just, it's key to business success, okay? Uh, there's always more information out there. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, crosses all borders. We talked about that. You can be serious without a suit. Okay, so this is this this definitely embodies the new generation uh, of folks. And there was a day where I went I went to work every day in the full regalia suit tie. Does anyone know what a tie is in here? By the way. <laughs> okay, excellent. Um, times are changing. And uh, the fact is you can be serious, you can, you can be remote, you don't have to be in an office, you don't have to be wearing a suit. You know, it's about uh, you know, purpose, it's about being driven, it's about being like-minded you know, towards, a, towards a goal and work ethic. Okay? Um, and great just isn't good enough. You like that one? You know, I like it and I hate it, right? It's true, because we all should, should, should strive to succeed and be the best that we can do and constantly improve ourselves. This could also be read to say that it's never enough, right? And, and that's not always true either, because life's about balance. Corporate, corporate life's about balance. It, it's all about balance. So, so I don't know that I completely agree with this, but that's their philosophy, and that's fine, because that fits with their culture, OK? So I've defined my core values. Now what do I do? OK, we just went through this. You've reported to the CEO. Last kind of point I want to make is I've got all these great kind of philosophies. I've got these core values. But how do I make sure people are following them? How do I make sure we're, we are actually doing the right thing? That's what we call compliance. OK, so you, hear, you may hear a lot ethics and compliance. They're, they're talked about together. But they're really two different things. Ethics are those values, those shared values we talked about. But compliance, it's the system of programs that we maintain, that we put in place to ensure that our shared values okay, are fulfilled. So these are things like corporate policies. Right? We have corporate policies for a reason. These lay out, in specific terms, the things we can and cannot do. And the corporate policies have to be consistent with your core values, with your ethical values. It all, it all works together. But to ensure that somebody in Lithuania, somebody in Poland, someone in the US, someone in South Africa are all following the same set of rules. And the core values are great. We talked about integrity. But what does it mean? What does integrity really mean? 
Well, you're going to have a policy that may say, we don't take bribes. You can't make that facilitation payment that I talked about earlier. Okay? When you submit your time and expense report, because you have to submit your time so we can bill our client, it has to be accurate. It has to be truthful. You have to have actually worked those hours. Right? Here's the kinds of expenses that you can get paid back for. It can't be for that you know, theater trip that you took your you know, significant other to you know, off in you know, the Caribbean. Right? It's got to be a business purpose. So we have these systems of, of policies, of laws, of guidelines, of programs. We have at Accenture a, a, a new enhancement we call anti-corruption program. Anytime that somebody wants to give a gift to a government entity, it could be a government itself, it could be a company that's partially owned by the government, like a telecom company, some of the, oftentimes are run by the government or are partially owned, it has to be recorded in a system. It has to go through various levels of approvals. Certain gifts are fine. Hey, you know, I'm working with this client, it's a government client, you know, we, we, worked, we just finished a big implementation, come on, we're all going out to the local watering hole and buying everybody beers and, 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 you know, this or that or, you know, sodas or whatever. Is that okay? You need to know the answer to that, and that's where these come, in play, come into play. There's rules, there's guidelines you need to follow that will tell you, is that okay? Is that consistent with our core value? Is it consistent with our system of ethics? And ultimately, is it consistent with our culture? Okay? So this just gives you the example of some of the things that can go wrong. So these are the headlines, right? This just gives you an idea, right? But multiple affairs, bribery, failing to report gifts, what I was just talking about, more bribery, Spam, okay, you know, and look at these fees, right? Look at these penalties, 180,000. There's, there, there's, there's, there's ones that go into the millions, tens of millions, in some cases hundreds of millions of dollars. This is real. This is real. It happens all the time. And it's not always this sensational, right? It starts really small. It starts with you. It starts with you making that facilitation payment. It starts with you, you know, uh, claiming something wrong on your expense report. Oh, we're not going to worry about that. It was just one little thing. It was only 50 bucks. It's only 100 bucks, right? But, but it balloons, and that's how you erode your culture. So anyway, with that, I'm going to, uh, this gives you an example right here of our code of business ethics, which I mentioned earlier, which we've got. Um, this is our policies website that you can go to and you can search for all of our policies. This is a, a framework for how we design our programs, like our anti-corruption program. There's different elements we've got, okay? And then we won't go through these. So, you know, in sum, right, why be ethical? It's right, it's smart. Why aren't ethics and core values enough? Well, without compliance, it's, it's, it's good, but it's a noble aspiration. You need rules, okay? Compliance without ethics, it's just, not, it's just another set of rules. So that you need culture. And this is how, kind of how it all feeds. So with that, questions, thoughts, any, any good tidbits you want to know? You know, anything you've, you always want to know but are afraid to ask? Anybody? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Yes. Example of compliance? Yeah, so for so example is, for example, the anti-corruption programs. We call it anti-corruption, but think of it as anti-bribery. We don't want to bribe people. So I don't want to give, you're, you're a government client, and I come to you, and I say, hey, we're bidding on this for you. Come on, let's go out. You know, here are two tickets to this lovely show, and why don't you take your spouse out, and why don't you do this? And, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, I hope to get the business from you. Because I think we'd work really well together. That's not so good. So, like I said, what we have is we have a program in place. People go, have to go online, and they have to say, you know what? I want to give this client a gift. The gift is this. I describe it. It's worth this many dollars. Ba-boom. Hit. Send. It goes through a whole approval process. It can be automatically approved if it meets certain thresholds. If it doesn't, it has to get referred to the legal department or other folks for an actual approval. So that's one example, for example, of a program 
that makes up our compliance. Because we want to ensure people aren't engaging in bribery, because bribery, in most cases, is illegal. So that's how we ensure we comply with the law. Our policies themselves are compliance vehicles, right? It tells you what to do, gives you instructions, so that we can be sure our people are complying with the law. Other elements of compliance, training. Someone mentioned that earlier. We have required training that everyone has to take all throughout the year on different topics. Again, to ensure they are understand these things and are, and are complying with them so that we don't get in trouble as a corporation and they don't get in trouble as an individual. Many of these things can, can lead to criminal liability for, for you as the employee. So, other questions, thoughts? Anything you just want to say anything? Smile? All right, great. Well, thank you all very much. I very much appreciate your attention. I hope you got a little bit, a uh, little bit out of this, and kind of understand the importance of corporate ethics and, and values and, and and culture and compliance. And you will take that with you as you blossom off into your would-be careers. Uh, it is really important stuff. So, thanks again.